bloody what? In, and I think they go in October, November, which is the end of the season. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yeah.
this meeting well, will be filed. Yeah. <laughs> recorded, recorded by the town council. Right. Submissions for the public. Who are mate? Name? Uh, Stephen Horton, Snowberry Coast. Yeah, I'd like to. Um, I'll try to be as brief as possible, but it is a slightly complicated subject. Um, it's um, a concern about road safety. Um, um, sorry, hang on a minute. Shall I carry on? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, road safety on Bradley Stoke Way um, between the Willowbrook Centre and specifically the Metro bus stop on the other side of the road from the Willowbrook Centre, so on the Leisure Centre side. Um, so what I've um, noticed are on several occasions is um, people are, um, instead of using the crossings, the light control crossings are just going directly across from the Willowbrook Centre, let's say near the giant um, shop on the corner, and just going straight across the road, running across the road, or ambling, depending on <laughs> how they feel, vaulting over the, um, the two barriers in the central reservation uh, in order to get to the metro bus stop. Um, and obviously that's because it's such a, a long-winded way, the, if you like, the safe way, <laughs> just come out of the Willowbrook Centre, turn right, mm -hmm. go along, press the button on the Pelican, mm -hmm. on the Toucan Crossing, wait for the lights to change, which can be up to 25 seconds, I believe, go into the centre of the road, press the next button, another 25 seconds across, and then turn left to reach the Metro bus stop. Mm -hmm. So, um, so there's at least two Pelican Crossings there, within the there's one. Of each other. Yeah, but neither are convenient if you want to go direct yeah. from the um, ledgers, uh, from the Willowbrook Centre to the new Metro bus stop. So I say I've seen um, various groups of people doing that dangerous manoeuvre, really. Um, and what particularly concerns me is that I saw at half past seven in the morning some school children doing it. Um, so you know they're dressed in dark blazers, dark trousers, um, and of course in the winter. A winter's morning it would be potentially dark mm -hmm. so it strikes me as being a very dangerous um, situation if you like um, so um, that, that's a concern um, it leads me on to kind of think well you know the design of let's call it our town center because that's what the council calls it so of course it is a an official town center should we really have um, that road that goes through there with a central reservation with motorway style barriers is, is, is really giving a signal to motorists to say it's okay to do fast speeds really. The design of the road, although the speed limit is 30 miles an hour, the design of the road isn't really um, indicative of the fact that it's got a 30 miles an hour uh, speed limit. Which is actually um, contrary to the to the rules of highway design, um, and in fact, when somebody about five years ago came to this council and asked for the speed limit to be reduced at the crossing just south of uh, Savages Wood Roundabout, um, the answer event that came back uh, from uh, South Gloucestershire eventually was that they couldn't reduce the speed limit from 40 to 30 because the architecture of the road didn't indicate, wasn't suitable for a 30 miles an hour speed limit. But they have now. You'll know after that there were two accidents <coughs> near the Willowbrook Centre where young people mm. um, sustained life, um, life um, threatening or what's it called, life altering um, injuries. And, and then as, only as a result of that they reduced the speed limit on both sides of Savages Wood Roundabout to 30 miles an hour, which is completely contrary to what they were saying. Um, in terms of the highway architecture. So, um, so I'm raising the, the road safety uh, concern. Uh, people crossing the road uh, is, is very dangerous there. But also I think the whole design of the way that the road passes through the town centre needs to be examined. You know? I don't see why 
why do we have a central motorway style barriers in the only sec on the only section of that road through the town centre? Whereas if you go further down or up Bradleystoke Way, you'll find it's a faster speed limit, but there's no central, there's no kind of crash barriers in, in the uh, in the centre of the road. So it's completely contrary to to what you'd expect. Yeah, the speed limit's only forty mile an hour in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Like crash barriers in the middle of the road. Sure. Crash barriers are what you see on a motorway, exactly. uh, to be honest. Yeah. So it, it just gives the wrong signal <coughs> to to motorists. So I'm not coming here with a solution, but I know, I'm uh, flagging up a, a concern and kind of questioning the design of of the town centre. So that's that's my point. Thank you. Right. Okay. Anyone else want to come? Wasn't, wasn't that put in after the accident there? That, that they changed from memory a long time ago now, but from memory that wasn't there until the accident, and they actually changed that to stop people trying to. Between no, them. I don't think so. Is it always <coughs> So from that like triangle section at the back of the test kit, yeah. like, that the second crossing in. But, but, they, but they've always had those crash barriers. Crash there. barriers have always yeah. been there. Mm -hmm. Before the Bradbury State Way was modified further up, that was the only section of Bradbury State Way that had uh, four lanes on it, so two lanes on either side. Mm -hmm. And it was the only section of the road where the old Tesco building, like what, mm -hmm. circa 2007, mm -hmm. that had the lorry entrance and everything else on there. That's so right, all yeah. those are the issues and problems, it's all a bit of a... Yeah, because the, the town centre, if you like, was just on one side of the road and there was really nothing on the other side of the road. There was, at one point, there was no leisure centre, yeah. there was no Champs and Marne. Yeah. In fact, there was no way of walking up from Alex Close over the, over that bridge. That bridge uh, over the brook there was installed um, to produce a work, to provide a way for people to easily get to the town centre. But at one point, none of that existed. So. It was just a road that, if you like, went around the edge of the town centre. But if you but think about the way that road's configured, so the second crossing was put in to kind of link the nature reserve to the Tesco car park to yeah. allow people to cross more safely. Mm -hmm. The existing crossing was there, which links you to the leisure centre car mm -hmm. park to the Willowbrook Centre on the other side of the road. Mm -hmm. Now, because the new crossings, the new uh, bus stops are there, you couldn't realistically put crossing too close to the bus stops because that would be dangerous in itself. I mean, realistically, the only thing you could do is potentially put those pedestrian barriers in the side of the road to right. stop mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. crossing, you know, being able to just lift a leg. No, you'd have to actually physically climb the fence to get over, like they do on uh, school, um, outside schools. The same height as About waist well. height or slightly yeah. above. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'd have to have that all the way down the middle or all the way down either side between mm -hmm. the, um, where well, the bus stops don't... Whether say Gloucestershire would do that, yeah. Well, when the Willowbrook Centre was designed, um, I saw in the plans that the concept was that there was they called it an axis of I don't know an axis of something. Um, so basically, you'd come out of the Willowbrook Centre. There would be a crossing immediately there, so you wouldn't have to turn right and go along the bit. And so you'd be able to go across, and then that would meet up with the with the road with the path into the into the leisure centre, and that mm. that sounds like a good design. Yeah. Um, what we've got now is you have to come out, go to the right, cross over, and then straight on to the leisure centre. But if you go to the bus stop, the metro bus, you have to come out, go right, wait and wait, and then go left. So it's not um. it's not a good design. <coughs> yeah, but it's only a few minutes, isn't it? Most People are taking risks. This is the <coughs> issue, you know. Well, I suppose and we could write the same <coughs> bus, do you think, Sharon? We can, um, but I put those points. Yeah, but, but I know what they'll say. Know, they'll say yeah. it's all about the accident record, and I guess that they're yeah. not. But, <laughs> that, but yeah. that's what. Yeah. That's, that's a terrible what argument, uh, and, and that's what that's, that's what we've had before. Do, you know, yeah. saying they don't do anything until there's been a serious accident. Yeah. <laughs> what about um, signage to say it's prohibited to cross at this point? Because it's done. It, well, attached to the barrier, sort of thing. Yeah. It's all about desire um, lines. Is, when yeah. we um, come out from the back of the Willowbrook Centre, mm -hmm. could there be a, a sign that says, please don't cross, um, please don't cross the, the road um, through, through what, the, what they the road, call yeah. the crash barriers. Yeah. Please don't cross it um, at this point. Please use the pedestrian crossing. But I think that the, the people who would read the sign would, you, would be the people who would do that yeah. anyway. Yeah. It's the people who just 
ignore oh, yeah. what you can say. Um, pedestrians crossing at this point will be prosecuted. They'd probably be the same people that would jump over that sign. Mm. Yeah. I mean, in terms of the speed of it, what I would also say is uh, there's quite a lot of traffic that goes faster than 30 miles an hour on there. Uh, let's say between 30 and 40, more perhaps nearer 40 sometimes. But every now and again, you get some idiot that thinks it's very clever to kind of put put their foot down. Uh, a number of times I've kind of been in the vicinity there, and somebody accelerates from you know naught to 70, uh, right. shooting down there. Um, it's very dangerous. You know, the combination of that and somebody trying to cross the road, potentially in the dark, you know, is is a very dangerous one. I've been undertaken in the bus lane several times. Yeah. Yeah, you're sticking to 30, and then somebody yeah. shoots. Up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Obviously, the, it, it's it's also quite badly lit there because when you're going through and it's dark, and you get the glare of the green and the red. Well, not so much red, but when it's glaring green on the traffic lights, you can't necessarily see pedestrians actually waiting to cross the road as well. It's kind of murky because of the blue lights on the sports centre and the blue lights on the Tesco. It's, it's an awful lighting situation. Yeah. It makes it mm. horrendous. Well, all we can do is note your point at the moment, I think. And, uh, okay. I could have well, we to, could, but do you think there's any point in writing? Um, what do you remember saying? I personally think there's a point in writing, but I, well, I we, personally we I'd like to go with the yeah. idea of saying yeah. that. Mm. You know, why don't you do something with the central reservation, yeah. like putting in the uh, barriers to stop yeah, pedestrians crossing? More barriers, maybe, yeah. you can ask them. Because the crossing mm. is at the, uh, the far end of it, the north, north end, I suppose it no, would be in that, no, that would be true. Yeah. West end, wouldn't it? The one that comes out the corner of where the McDonald's is planned is quite underused. It's very rare you have to actually stop at that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is true, yeah. But they put that one in because those two accidents happened. That's right. That was that was it. Like using the end of the road to get to the nature reserve to the Willowbrook. Mm. But it's very rarely used. Mm. Yeah, but it's useful for those going mm. into the sandwiches. I guess stopping yeah. 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 Okay, Doug. Any more yeah. points in? Yeah. No, no, thank you. Okay. Right. To receive apologies for absence. Uh, Terry Cullen, Tom Aditcher, Brian Hopkinson, and Sarah Messenger from Bradford Stoke and Blue. Alain. Oh, Alain, bloody hell, that's got a few of them, yeah. Right, okay. Declarations by members under the Local Government Act. Have we any? I need to change mine. Um, Bradley Stoke Radio can be removed now. Um, Aren't you sorry about No, not anymore. No, no. And also Conservative Party as well. Oh, right, yeah. Are you not part of that either? No. <laughs> Sorry. I've only just had to know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, right. Okay, anyone else? <clears throat> Any more for any more? No. Okay. Announcements by the chair? Well, I have none except to say that I finished my seven or eight page uh, Willow Brook submission, so that's uh, just gone today. So, uh, should be <laughs> good enough to read. Okay, to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 17th, 17th of June, the correct record.
don't mess with it, otherwise you'll be calling in the office. To <laughs> a special I'm trip. Admit, I don't go back and check. So don't don't know. Know. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> I do it on purpose now. I miss one. <laughs> something to do with poppies or something. Uh, I think it has yeah, poppies I, on there. Right. I think they might be. Yeah. I don't know whether they start, because they were all, you know, they all look like they're computer written, and they weren't, none of them were hand written. Yeah. So yeah. I'm guessing, yeah, we probably do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right, item six, 6.1, update on Brookway Activity Centre Site Development. Um, a quick update, no, it's just to say um, John is currently meeting with prospective contractors, so tenders and quotes will be brought to September 4 Council meeting for discussion and decision. Okay, thank you very much. Right, we've got an update on the leisure equipment at the Julie Centre. Yeah, you have that tape. Yeah. That's great. Sorry, it's 6.2, not 6.1. Yeah, so no, it's I said 6.2, yeah. No, Graham's written one up there. Oh, right. No, I'm yeah. correcting myself. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, these, I'm, uh, I've been waiting for some additional quotes, so I did decide to bring something back to this, so I bought this because it's like indicative mm -hmm. of what might be possible. Some people have provided pictures, and other people have just provided a list of equipment. So, um... Um, we talked last time of, about proposals including groundworks in the region of 15, 25 and 40. What we've got in front of you is um, just under 15, uh, 30 and approximately 40. Um, so, I don't know if it's... From chatting with various people, the option two uh, in a circular format. So that's the way they sort of advertise that kit, is the picture you see there. But um, they've provided a very basic image in that right-hand picture of it on a circular uh, wet pour. Uh, and the idea being there that we can have a lot of floor markings to, um, you know, like that constitutes uh, approximately a 50 metre running track around the outside of that circle. So um, the idea is that there can be lots of floor markings as well. So it becomes like a workout area for um, quite a few things, including the actual kit. Who are um, these companies going to supply? Uh, the top quote is a company, I believe, called AMV. The middle quote is a company who I found quite uh, impressive in terms of the stuff, and they're called Compan, uh, and a lot of their equipment is actually um, made uh, within Europe as opposed to sourced from um, China and places like that where a lot of the stuff comes from, and the, the longevity of it and the quality of the construction is meant to be, um, I am told, significantly better. Um, that area as well, out of that quote, because I was a bit amazed by the groundworks cost, but if you think that, that does actually include 150 square metres, I think, of wet pour, you know, which is a safety surface. Um, it's sort of, you know, I've got, that's the sort of the breakdown of that particular second quote there. Uh, but these are sort of like, like these are just to give people a bit indicative idea. Like I said, I'm, I've got other, lots of other quotes floating around. 
um, that uh, what we hadn't got was anything to do with actual, you know, what's the cost of actually installing something. The option one is very much uh, this, I th probably a bit more sophisticated, but the, the, I don't know if anyone's familiar with the play equipment that's gone in at Stoke Gifford behind the leisure centre there, but it's, it's like six bits of kit that have just been put on mats, so they're not really yeah. connected. Little or, Stoke, I think. Do you mean Little, little Stoke? Little yeah, Stoke, yeah. yeah. Um, which is obviously a cheaper way of doing it, but I, 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 I'd like to think that we are possibly aspiring to something a little bit more sophisticated and weatherproof what's, than what's that. What's here what I was like depicted for option two is what I always imagined this being. Okay. So not, I mean, this looks like equipment that isn't got really got moving parts. Yeah. It's just static mm. stuff. Calisthenic, yeah. Yeah, yeah. robust things mm -hmm. that people can use of all ages. And to me, that's like what I envision the idea being when we discuss this back at what strategic planning. There, I've got. Nearly two years ago now. That's sort of bigger versions if people want to look at, if I pass that one that way, and that picture, that's the same oh, picture, but it just gives you yeah. something you can see a bit better than... Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but it seems to be less equipment in a more expensive one. You've got 12 separate pieces in the first quote. Yeah, yeah. but that second one has got, that Combi 3 is like a large, work. that's one bit of kit, but it's a large workstation with several bits off it. Uh -huh. So in fact it, it amounts to seven pieces as opposed to twelve pieces in the first one? Well, you, you could, yeah. It just seems like a lot less equipment <coughs> for the money. Yeah, mm -hmm. but what you're getting is very simple, you're getting nothing really complicated in that mm -hmm. first Mm -hmm. Well, that isn't complicated in the second one, as so Ben has said, it's all fixed stuff, there's nothing moving. I think that the, what, as Graham said, what inflates this, the second quote it's is the wet, the, pour, the wet and the, pour and I guess then the markings on that ground. Yeah, because yeah, if you actually look at the equipment costs, they're actually uh, surprisingly comparable. But do we not then lose? I mean, I think. Again, as Ben said, when we talked about this two weeks, not three years ago initially, it was to go on the green to be part of the green. Whereas if you take it the other way, you're creating 110 square meters or whatever it is of, of more wet pour on the green. Mm -hmm. So you kind of it doesn't that doesn't I think that's quite a good idea because it means it's all weather use then. Mm -hmm. Saturated. The stuff at Little Stoke, that, that, that's just, uh, just looking at that, is that will be rained off for most of the year, that will be completely unusable. That's just on separate mats, is it? It's just on separate mats and there's no real, and it's just bits of kit, so the thing about that sort of kit is you can only have one person using each bit anyway, whereas something like this you can um, particularly with like a lot of the companies now on that sort of second bit, they, they, these people have uh, like signs where you download apps and it gives you work out ideas and suggestions and stuff like that. I thought it was even something because we have uh, we have what you call them um, boot camp type things here, don't we as well? And it might be something we could even link into the leisure centre where they might want to. Provide exercise classes using that kit as a way of encouraging people to maybe join the leisure centre or, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I think there's a lot of things really if you have a lot of workout stations. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, so the, the main aim of the equipment, is, is it health and fitness related or is it for them to sort of the youth, to, is it for fun as well? Because um, I think they would really enjoy using this, but it seems like there's it's very similar, the types of things that they can use, like there isn't a lot of variety. So it's mainly climbing and, you know, what is the, ma the main aim? Is it to, for them to, uh, for health and fitness or is it also... So for, for a start, it's for the community as a whole. Uh, it's not just for young people. Okay, um, it's more aimed at adults. So when yeah. we were discussing okay. this at like strategic planning, yeah. we were making the assessment that we've got lots of individual... Um, Tactile play areas, if you like, that yeah. are 
for a younger audience and instead of saying, well, what are we providing in terms of for the broader audience? So do you think older people would... I can imagine kids would love it, mm. but do you think that peop, older people would, um, would do it? Because I, I can't imagine people over 30 uh, using it. Mm. I think it's mainly for youth, isn't it, really? I think people over 30 yeah. use that. Yeah, there's lots of... I think we, we have a lot of people, actually, old. yeah, that, that yeah. use that field over there for sort of jogging around and great yeah. fixing yeah. equipment and doing... Yeah, and I think if, if, it's some, if it was like those exercise um, bikes and things like that, older people would use it, but just these climbing things, what I've seen in areas mm. in Bradley Stoke, mm. the monkey bars just completely get overtaken by kids and kids love stuff like that. I don't really see a lot of older people using monkey bars mm. and things. Well, the I think the type of equipment we've got elsewhere is deliberately gauged at a younger audience, where yeah. this isn't gauged at necessarily that younger audience, mm. it's gauged at... Mm. It's trying to just fit everybody. It's just, it's yeah. trying, and that's the way new, that's the way outdoor gym equipment is going. They're, 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 it's moving away very much from just having six workstations. I mean, certainly those um, most of my quarters had were very well used by people in their forties and fifties. And what were these based on? Sort of thing? Uh, it was probably more of these kind of things, yeah. and along with the seafront, basically people yeah. running along the seafront. Yeah. 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 Have, have you got an installation cost or option one at all for those, those equipment and groundworks? No. Uh, well, that's what they sent me. So, uh, right. yeah. presumably that includes. Yeah. Well, groundworks is you know about a quarter of the price of this one here. They're not wet stuff. They're not putting it on anything. They're just whacking it on a bit of matting. Just putting some brass matting down. Right. Mm. I think the only thing which would concern me because I think it'd be such a success that you'd end up with people who run commercial elements of training and what have you would start to use it. And then you become the opposite. We have the opposite problem. It might be a victim of its own success. <laughs> In terms of, it was there supposed to be for everyone to use, not people like in organised groups and this, that, and the other. You end up the same predicament, but I could have had elsewhere with stuff. Okay, so at this stage, this is merely an update. So thank you for that, Graham. But it was sort of yeah. to give you an idea of yeah, the cost of and where yeah. you want to go now. Yeah. Personally, I'd like the option to explore in more detail mm, yeah. and given more options and layout proposals no, it's, uh, well that's why I mentioned option three because option three is the, the sort of stuff that all you can go by is where they're going in and option three is the more sophisticated version now of moving part equipment so you're you because a lot of the stuff in gyms anyone who goes to a gym will probably know is the use of sort of resistance ropes and fix you know mag, like the magnetic weight stuff and things so Mm. Uh, there's that. It's like a new generation of indoor, outdoor, as opposed to the sort of thing they've put in that little Stoke, mm. uh, which will probably have, you know, medium to long term maintenance issues because of the moving parts associated with it. Mm. Um, that option three then, so if you widened it and you looked at extra pieces of equipment like that on it, yeah, does that? Option three include more of the wet pool, a larger area, or, or it wouldn't necessarily be. Uh, that's just to give you an idea of how much some of that other kit is. It could just be you reconfigure it. But the I, I just thought uh, I like the idea from what I've seen from the research of having, because um, it's a bit of a sort of no brainer, really, isn't it? That if you can put other exercises there for the cost of just marking out lines on a pitch on an area which people would use in conjunction possibly with, because a lot of people do their training, you know, even the, the gym that I go to, people use apps for training and stuff like that, because otherwise a lot of people feel quite lost, they're just confronted by equipment. So something that can actually take it onto that level, where it's actually giving you a, a workout based on the equipment you've got in front of you. Um, I think is um, is, is, is a creative two, way of, um, attractive to older people than thirty. Then do you think the research says it is? Yeah, we I think got, um, people yeah. in their late teens and twenties mm -hmm. possibly, but I, I think people bench. over thirty, if they do, 
want to do something outdoors, they probably just do running and mm. I don't know, uh, or if they wanted to do a lot of exercise, they'd probably go to a gym, but um, monkey mm. bars, I definitely think will attract youth because I've seen how much yeah. they love dangling from things. <laughs> <laughs> This is also, you've got to remember, there's going to be people in our community that don't necessarily, you know, want to go to things like gyms who might be over 30 or what have you, and they want the accessibility and they want the, mm -hmm. they should be free and they should be promoting a healthy living and lifestyle and yeah. all those things. I think um, what Nikki's saying is right, I think the older generation may well look at things like Graham has said about the magnetic resistance kind of equipment, things like that. Well, well then to, you would, that would be exploring option yeah. three then, realistically. Yeah. And if caps are willing to spend that much money on option. So then if you're spending $30,000 on the service time. It's always going out to see if we can get grant mm -hmm. funding, isn't it? But we need to have a firm proposal to look at the, always, for the grant funding. What people do from the research I've done is people will often start off and then add to it. But then you're back to the wet pour element of it. If well, no, not necessarily, because you might craft space on the wet pour footprint to add additional bits of equipment. Which was my question in the first place. Yeah. Mm. I mean, if, if that's the case, yeah. and if that additional 10k is literally just for the resistance to other equipment and other equipment that's not perhaps, as Nikki has mentioned, the stuff that's going to appeal to younger people, it might appeal to older people, and that's within that groundwork for the that wet pour area, I think it's worth looking at that. I mean, if younger people can do it more easily than the older people, then it's going to be overtaken by the younger people. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I'm just thinking about areas where I've seen this before, and it seems to I appeal think. to a, a broad spectrum of people. I think it does, yeah. yeah it does. It's, it's like, uh, you yeah. know. I know we don't necessarily have the weather. People over 30 still exercise. <laughs> 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 I know, that's what I'm saying. Like, they do, but the type of exercise, like, for instance, if I, um, I would feel a bit self-conscious dangling around because uh, but I mean everyone's different if people feel very confident they might be willing yeah. to do it but um, but I because I've got young kids I know they love doing stuff like that and they find it quite easy to do stuff like that whereas once you get to a certain point it's not that easy to do stuff like that so well, it's, it's, it's quite easy with that sort of layout to put in and they do do that in uh, this particular company you have a bit of sit-on kit as well. Mm. I mean, those monkey bars are just really high because yeah. that guy is... And there isn't actually... Really there's no foot. steps up to it, is there, on that middle bit, no. by the looks of it. No. If you've seen uh, places where you, it does attract adults and it's, uh, it's not overtaken by young people, then it might well work. But in this area, there isn't really anything like that that I've seen, so mm. it's an unknown... Well, this is what we're trying to do. This is yeah. what we're trying to answer. We're trying to be very... Giving ourselves that question. With that, the board has had, which is exactly what we kind of thing we look at, it really works well and it is used by all generations. Okay, yeah. Okay, because it's, it's separate pieces of equipment rather than on one concentrated thing. Yeah, I mean, they, they've been clever, they've put it, a lot of people run along the seafront, oh. so they've, they've spaced them out along oh, the seafront. Right. Is it? Port of Tech, on the arena. Oh. Oh. I think it would be, I don't think there is anything is there, because the original idea was we were going for lottery funding and we were not turned down because that was so well, I thought we did have lottery debate, but that's how we came up last time we spoke when I think Rachel was there, we saw the fact that the tax is going to be access to I think there's money in Uber, mm -hmm. which is, mm -hmm. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure whether there's actually for the lottery or something. But it is, it is about so going out and getting grant funding, but we might have to pump the prime, that phrase, with some of our own funding. But it was really to, obviously because Graham has got so many ideas, not ideas, you know what I mean, he's had a lot of input from loads of companies. You need to steer from councillors as to which which option you develop further, really? I think, personally, if we're going to go for it, and we're going to go for funding on it, then we might as well look at option three, which includes 
equipment, which is equally set may appeal more to the older generation rather than the pure physical strength things, resistance, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're going to look for funding, mm -hmm. then you might as well look for funding. What funding is available to them? The usual Sports England, various bits and pieces, there's still, I haven't, I haven't checked it as of uh, today. But yeah, what are we applying for that first? And, uh, yeah, so well, well, no, they want to know. Yeah, they want to know exactly what you're applying for funding for, so they need to know yeah. the equipment and costings and things. Yeah. It's a bit of a, which is well, quite. And sort of options two and three, then we need to see what exactly what equipment there is. And, uh, Graham, I remember the pictures, I think. Yeah. I think Graham is going to be going at a mock-up to get yeah. potentially option three. Yeah. Get that as our, uh, what, which is option two plus. Yeah, yeah. option yeah. two plus. Like resistance stuff. Like and then um, mm. go from there in terms of how we fund it. Yeah. But not, if we go to option three, not the pure strength hanging from bar stuff, but stuff that people can come and sit on. And yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. All, all I can say is I do know a little bit about the fitness world and it is a big movement towards calisthenics and using body weight as opposed to your own body weight. So that's what you're doing. It's not that you have to be super strong, you're just using your own body weight to actually exercise your muscles. Mm. And that's the sort of the, the way that thinking is certainly going at this moment in time. If you're quite confident that you've seen places where it is widely used by the public, then I trust you because I don't know much about it. But no. I was just thinking what I would personally do, yeah. which is not the same as what other people in the public would do. I, 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 th I think that's a f option two with maybe a few of the fixed pieces of kit, you know, like the cycles and the stuff like that, because they're all being updated into different mm -hmm. formats. Mm. But um, yeah, but yeah, so we explore that really, something like option two plus. So we're getting a, okay. a bit yeah. of a compromise yeah. in terms of yeah. the yeah. the sit on moving type stuff. And the other nice thing about some of this as well, because I did actually check it out, and I do think it's sort of is that um, yeah, well, one of the leaflets it says here, because that was the question I asked, is some of that fixed stuff. People in wheelchairs, for example, who have upper body strength and things, can actually use this kit. Whereas some of the, you know, sit-on stuff, etc., yeah. stuff you can't what use. Whereas you can actually drive a wheelchair under a bar and sort of do upper body exercise and stuff yeah. like that. You know. In the Little Stoke Park area. Um, where there's a lot of balance things where people can balance walking around and then there's those zip slides. I've seen quite a lot of older people using those type of things. Um, but that, yeah, that is, um, it's more sort of a play area type thing. Now this is they're putting six bits of kit just right yeah. around the back of the uh, building. So they're exercise, actual exercise units. Yeah, if you if you're, you know more about it than I do, I was just wondering, um, it's obviously going to appeal differently to different sections of the community, and if there is a wide section that it would get used, then that's fine. It doesn't have to be used by every section of the community. Well, why not we still what we said, and we, we, Graham looks at the option too, but with some yeah, pieces that would appeal to. Yeah. 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 What about exercise bikes? Any chance of getting any of those? Is there a, it's quite uh, yeah, there are some modern trainer thing. No, it's a bit of what because the, the uh, exercise bikes outside don't last too well, do they? I think from what you said. There's before. new generation. Cross trainer, that's it. There's new generations of them. Yeah. Stand on it and you move the handle. But like, oh, um, right. that's we, we had something like that yeah, in the Jubilee, didn't we? Mm -hmm. used, but I guess yeah. that was in the middle of a play, a children's play area, yeah. so yeah. that would probably mm. put adults off going mm. and using. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I never ever saw anyone use that. And children used it a lot, yeah, because yeah. it was in the play yeah. area. Okay, so, so Graham's going to look two. at option two option plus. Two plus. Uh, option two with, with yeah. some, yeah. what did you say, movable? With a couple of maybe other options with a couple of um, movable resistance. Yeah, yeah. resistance. Yeah. 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 Cross yeah. phase type things. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's exactly what. I still have a vision of you on that bicycle smoothie maker from the uh, yeah, Oakland skate park. <laughs>
Yeah, I remember that. Nice, good spoon, you know. Yeah, you were coming out at the... Um, I remember you saying, crikey, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I remember that, I heard it. Right, yeah, okay then. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have a, like, a pose in a second, just so that we've got like a tray yeah. of them? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, second anyone? Brian's in, all those in favour? So do you want. Thank you very much. Right, six points. Great. Update on position. Update on position. Mobile equipment. That's on the other side of your. This is again very much indicative costings from one company on steer the waiting costings from other people. Um, so if you remember the story so far. Um, convert the end hard court to a Muga. When I started looking into that, I realised that could potentially compromise our netball hires because by putting a division between the second and third courts, it would mean the runoffs would be less than two metres, which would not comply with netball England. Mm -hmm. um, therefore, the only solution possible was to extend the hard courts. We then shied away from that option and went for the option down of possibly exploring dual use down the overflow car park and then for express concerns around um, health and safety and conflict of use we decided to explore the extension of the MUGA again. Uh, I've got one quote back uh, and that for, to expand it, again, we are talking over uh, just approximately 90 square metres of additional hardcore and relocating those two huge floodlights that are down the far end. So that's the first cost we have there. Um, and then the second cost, which I must admit shock, shocked me a bit, but that, the reason for that is that you are talking about four sides of uh, heavy-duty sports fencing, hence the little picture I thought I'd put in, because uh, that doesn't come cheap, and that is also, um, it's like got a lower rebound noise to it. So if you are developing a facility that might be used extensively, um, you, you won't have the sort of travel you get from a ball being kicked against existing ball walls that we have on, on the courts because they, they sort of reduce the sound impact and uh, of industrial strength. So yeah, that's 35 metres times 19.5 metres. Uh, so that's two times 35, two times 19.5. So that's a lot of fencing if you're doing four sides. Mm -hmm. And the Mooga ends as well. So that would enable then the middle court would then comply with Sports England and have a two metre runoff um, on that side. Um, the actual netball hire would benefit because we'd then have two courts with two metre runoff at both sides. Uh, at the moment, we only have one court with two metre runoff, and that is the central court. Um, so, <coughs> yeah. So, what's the demand for netball then? Could you let the second court easily know? Yeah, it is used regularly, so you quite often right. use all three courts. So just evening just evening netball and weekends, you need the netball. Right. Mm. And the second question is, what have we got in the budget? Uh, that's forty-five grand. That's 50, 58 grand approaching. That's quite. Uh, that but again, the, these are like exter the plan is to externally fundraise. Right. Development of sports. That's facility. two. That's okay. not one combined. That's two separate things. Is it? Yeah. So that is okay. just your basic, yeah, and right. this is more of an all singing and dancing. Yeah, thing there. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's just ex ones, right? that's just expanding the cut the hard yeah, and yeah. that's then right. installed in. So it is both. Yeah. Oh, it is yeah. both. All oh, right. Right, so uh, but you, like, the point I was making was that's given us a figure at least for the extension of the hard court. That is an all singing and dancing, yeah, yeah, substantial. This, this bit. This bit. Yeah. And the idea of it always has been that it would be free to use. Right. So, it, it, it's not. so would it be a good idea to go to Sports England and 
the grant providers and to yeah. ask them how much they're prepared to dish up towards this and also this on the back end, yeah, the nursery equipment. That's the plan. Say, yeah, okay, well, I think that's a uh, suitable plan to go ahead with. But we, I'm also, like I say, awaiting some other, some other yeah, quotes, so okay, that right, might be... Yeah. The well, thing about okay, right. this particular company is... Um, who are they? Uh, they're a company in Sheffield. They're the ones who actually, in the end, put in our shelter. Right. And both John and myself, just the ground works for that shelter. I've never, you know, there was people on site that what's those amazing level tall thingies. They like well, proper, proper... <laughs> level tall thingies? You know, the... the doing ground levels. No, no, they have the, there's a special name for oh, it. Yeah, yeah, oh, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they yeah. they're yeah. using all that for doing the base for yeah. the that shelter. And yeah. it's yeah. just um, yeah. So you need that. For yeah. A, a piece of basic groundwork I thought it was very right. impressive. <laughs> 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 okay, so on this one, should we wait until we got some more tenders? Uh, well, we're not tendering it as yet, no, but we're, we're or, uh, interest, uh, yeah. expressions of interest. Let's one of the, one of the things, with. one company that I was awaiting a quote said, oh, well, it might be cheaper to go and get a tarmac company or something to do that mm -hmm. as opposed to doing it through. But then, like you then said in the next sentence, that would then invalidate your claim on the... Uh, the company did the install of the Mooga. Oh, right. If something went wrong, you'd obviously have to, you know, be like a separate. Yeah. I think I think people who put in. Right. So in this case, I do like to get a bargain, but I do think yeah. it's probably best to keep it all under. So we need some. More, <laughs> we need some more expressions of interest on on this then before we can decide anything. So this is actually also on the finance agenda. Is it? For Wednesday. A recommendation from here would be good to take to finance. Yes, that we. Yeah. Well, yeah, we've only got one tender, one uh, expression of interest, somebody at the moment. You said you're waiting for others. Yeah. Right. And And um, yeah, if we, well, if that, if that's that's what I would suggest is that we firm up some quotes because right. even this guy yeah. I sort of said just give me. He says, well, I'm not sure. I would want no more information on the. Floodlights and I stuff. I said, just give us me some indicative costs at this time. But I gave him as much information as I could on those floodlights. So he's going back with that, is he? Yeah. So. Uh, okay. So is, do you put firm up? Yeah. Firm up quotes. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I'll suppose that. Anyone want to second that? Um, if we, yeah, question is in your... Yeah, I just want to so you've got a specification drawn up for this now, because so everyone's new quoting for the same thing, or, or are they just coming back with what they think will do the job? But I, th I think... Because they're all going to quote differently, aren't they? Huh? Now I've got the, the sort of... I'll be interested to go back to this person to start off with and explore exactly the cost of the fencing because one alternative was, but we do need to, because you know, if we're taking out the fence to lengthen it, we, it might be that we put in a cheaper fence and then almost like sit a low fenced mugger within the perimeter fence, if you know what I mean. So you're not paying for... Yeah. three metres of heavy duty fencing that you have like say four foot three, of heavy duty. Is that duty. three metres there? It's supposed to be? Like, Apparently. That oh, which oh, is you, you are you are paying a lot of money. Yeah, that is an awful lot of yeah. Yeah. top quality fencing going. Yeah. 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 Uh, mm. So yeah, it might be, that might be an alternative, is right. that we replace with the existing, yeah. the extension of the end and the division, and then sit within that um, a lower level rebound wall. Right. That might, mm. okay. see what I'm saying, that might yeah, be yeah. the new... Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so firm up more quotes and obtain indications and grant funders as to the level of funding yeah. available. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
those in favor? Y'all yeah, all Right. Right there. I wonder whether you want to move um, the Oh, yeah, if you can do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right, so that is, which one is it? Um, it's 8 point. 8 point. Four. Yeah. Okay, can we uh, have a proposal to move 8 point 4 to the 4? Yeah. Yeah. Second in. Second in. Right. Thank you very much. Right, please, Thank you. Over to you. Right, so I think that's it. So this is our. Uh, the annual act of remembrance that we carry out on Sunday yeah. each year. Uh, you'll be aware that we start here, we go uh, towards the Willowbrook Centre, uh, and we have a parade, and that's really, really good. Over the last few years, we've dealt with an increasing number of irate motorists, where they have attempted to go around cordons, which are put in place by the police, um, uh, and we have volunteer marshals on those intersections. We have listened to some uh, comments from the public. We always have a, an LFE session at the end of each uh, event. Uh, we have a session that we put in place signage at some of the key places just on the weekend coming up so people know that they might be delayed for five or ten minutes because that's a, how long it takes for the parade to move up there. So this was a proposal to purchase 15... Uh, signs. It's the same firm we've got quotes from uh, that produce the signage for the 10k. Mm -hmm. um, so it's whatever they use is exactly the same. Uh, we would use Remembrance Sunday rather than a physical date. Therefore they're usable on uh, an ongoing basis. Because if we put a date uh, on there they would instantly be no good for the following year. Um, so that's, that's our proposal. It's, it's to make uh, the public aware that it's happening um, because not everyone, it would appear, knows that Remembrance Sunday is held on Sunday morning around the 11th of November every year. It's to take a little bit of the heat out of it because people do get surprised when it happens and it keeps my adult volunteers a little bit safer than otherwise. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's 125 pounds. I go straight in and propose that. You know, it's just, uh, it's just yeah. small amounts of money that uh, will make things a bit safer for you. Hopefully. So uh, that's the proposal. Seconded by Andy. Andy. All those in favour? Everyone. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Let me have. Email your bank account details. We'll pay my back transfer. That's fine. Um, yep. You know my bank account details because I, but I will do it anyway. Rich always likes to have it. I'll find that. Like That's absolutely fine. Each time. Yes. Thank you ever so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Seven seven point one. Uh, Graham, can we uh, just pick out some of the saving points we don't need to go line by line? No, we don't. That's what we said last time, and then you questioned it. And then you went through it, and I went. Why not? Well, it's all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, if I go through the headline news at the top, yeah. and then you can ask questions on the rest of it. Um, well, since the uh, last two months, regular youth work sessions delivered at the skate park, uh, Jubilee Harcourt, and surrounding areas. That's around here, and our girls' project sessions. There's been various additional sessions, uh, particularly over the summer period. Uh, a lot of those are ad hoc, where I just respond to, if, I know, if it's good weather, I know there will be lots of young people uh, gathered at usually the skate park or around here, so I will, I will go over there and spend some time there. Um, had two young people on school work experience uh, very late this year. It was almost like the last week of term, which was, I'm sure that's not how it usually is. For how long? Are you? A week? Yeah, um, for a week, yeah. full time, yeah. Um, and yeah, they were great. Um, previous year I had two young women, this year I had two young men. 
Uh, and yeah, we, um, I have to uh, give the, uh, the school additional um, consents or additional consents because I'm obviously out and about and uh, they were out and about with me. We, we actually did some of the research on the fitness equipment. We did like site visits to Little Stoke and uh, we went to a regional participation network meeting uh, with colleagues across South Gloss and Bristol. Um, they helped me with a lot of the, the food chair pickups and stuff like that and uh, much to my astonishment because I thought some of it might, they might have found it a little bit on the boring side but they, uh, they really enjoyed the, to the week and gave lots of positive feedback as well which was really good and as the week went on they started asking more questions and started getting more curious about stuff. Uh, so hopefully they've gone away, A, with an insight into the workings of Bradley State Town Council and B, into the uh, workings of uh, a youth worker and some of the projects and project strands. Um, blum, blum, blum. Um, ASB risk-taking event. Um, I don't know who's there. I think, uh, um, what was the ASB? Uh, and social behaviour. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Um, I think Tony. Yeah, Tony, Tony was, at, uh, uh, was at the event for a while. It was um, outside at the Willowbrook Centre, which was unfortunate because it was a very windy night. So my display initially got blown off the table, so I tried propping it up against the tables, and it got blown over again. So. But anyway, um, we weren't overwhelmed with numbers, but we it was very, very useful in terms of the quality of some of the conversations, particularly uh, a few parents of young people who I know about and you know, they sort of sought me out for a chat about stuff, which was really positive. Did you get any PS uh, COs there? Yeah, uh, yeah the police board. were there, the fire yeah. brigade were there, right, yeah. so, the school was there, uh, yeah. Southern Brooks was there, the drug and alcohol people from South Gloss were there. So it was about, it sort of was motivated by that little spike we had in there in social behaviour, but it was also about young people and risk taking and advising parents about risk taking behaviours and what they might be able to do in terms of seeking support and information and stuff like that. So, um, yep, regional participation network I mentioned in the community shelter, that was in terms of one of the other little projects I was, uh, that was successfully installed as you. Well uh, and again, it's good to know that as a community shelter, not a youth shelter, I have witnessed it being used positively by um, a lot of parents with their little kids, particularly on hot days and stuff like that, as a sort of shelter and a bit of a. Well, yeah. Just, uh, Just oh, it's over there, there, is it? Yeah. Oh, right, I've never seen it, yeah. It's for a place to call thing, right? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a bit more, although the other it's one was probably rain, more yeah. aesthetically yeah. pleasing, it, it does, it does yeah. provide actually a bit of shelter yeah. and a bit of windbreak and somewhere to sit down. So, uh, yeah. Recruitment though, that is um, another one of my part-timers has got another full-time job and so I've got a particular crisis around recruitment. Um, the need to get some additional staff in. Uh, I know I'll some say, additional staff. How many do you want? Well, I've got practically none at the moment. And, uh, on his own. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, we had approved a strategic plan in a whole package of recruitment. Unfortunately, for various reasons, we've not been able to recruit. Uh, so that's going back to strategic planning. Um, to uh, discuss and hopefully endorse again for a round of recruitment. But what I'm saying is I would urgently like to um, jump into the main body of the report and recruit that recruitment. I'd urgently like to try and recruit to the girls project because that's an active and successful project and I really on absolutely I've got one person now working every other week. Um, and you did start off with one well, we had three. in charge and two. Yeah. And then someone left on maternity leave and never came back, and then another person went off and yeah. did their college course and blah, blah. Um, 
Um, what are they yeah. recruited specially for the, for the girls thing? Are they? Well, they, they were, if you were going back a little bit without spending too much time on it, we uh, initially, to get things started, we, all, we used another organisation to, um, we employed them to deliver the girls' projects and then we two people them over and they, the staff came with it. Uh, and now all those staff over the space of two years have moved on to other things. How often do you run this uh, girls and young women's project? It's once a week plus trips and excursions and we've got trips coming up. Um, okay. We were going to have a residential in October but I'm having to put that on hold at the moment because I don't know if I've got any other staff. Uh, so what I'm saying, given most of the money for the girls project actually comes through external South Gloss funding, um, it would be, yeah. Oh, can, I, can I just oh, go? Ahead? Oh, right. yeah. Can yeah. I just go ahead and advertise? Yes, ASAP. Yeah, and so we discuss. Yeah. <laughs> we discuss the wider funding, uh, the yeah. strategic planning. So that's an action point I'm requesting, really. So that's from South Gloss, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, We've already kind of settled that anyway, haven't we? Right. I keep. I'm never quite sure what's been agreed. Sometimes. I didn't realise it was uh, South Gloss funding. That's that's even better. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'll propose that then. To what I'm recruiting. Yeah. Anyone second it? Nicky okay, second it. Second. All those in favour of it. Can I just explain if I propose something? Yeah. Stand the bottom. Stand the bottom. Yeah. Immediate recruitment. Then we'll obviously see going to be, because we've not managed. Down the bottom. Right, last sentence. All those in favour there? Yeah, we are. How many, how many positions are you recruiting? Well, I would like to try and get three staff again. Um, the other action is a minor one, really, but I think Ben will remember when he was, uh, was chair last year, is the food chair project. I was just chatting with some of the Tesco duty managers down at Hatchet Road by Park Bay. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they're just sort of under siege, <coughs> short staff, yeah. and I just and they get sort of community points for demonstrating what they're doing for the community. And I just thought it'd be nice of us to offer send another letter of thanks yeah. so they can then pass it on to their head office. Yeah. It was very and positive we received the last one that we Yeah, because apparently there. they very yeah. rarely get letters of Get letters of thanks and I appreciate it. Well, they suggested this. Well, no, I, 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 ch I chat with them because yeah, yeah. that's the benefit of using a smaller store. You yeah. get to know your staff. Can you send us a letter of the well, like after you send no, I, no, I, I, I actually, no, I actually said, would it benefit if I yeah. talked yeah. to the council about another letter of thanks? And they said, yeah, yeah that would be good. But after we've got a reading from Just Onions to Onions on Bread. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. Send them another letter. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, send them the end of the end of 42 great There's only so much you can do with a great big pile of onions. Garlic, it was. They have a lot of garlic. Is it? Oh, lovely. Oh, well, lovely, bring it round. <laughs> in terms of, <laughs> of, <laughs> terms of <laughs> ASP, it stopped the vampire problem. Right. Yeah. There's tons of bread in the office. <laughs> okay, right. Thank you for that. Um, Unless you'd like me to expand on any ideas. No, 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 you're all right, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> right, can I be stuck in blue? Update your steering committee, you've got something like that. Yeah, that's the... Uh, got some nice your pictures. Report. Yeah. report when you're going back. She's not here tonight, so... Uh, no. Oh, my word, they are. Nice pictures, aren't they? No, I didn't win the garden of the season either. No, unfortunately. Did you enter? No. Are you kidding? Are you be something to do with it. Yeah. There's some nice looking gardens there. That garden really looks cracking. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's, that's really thing. nice, isn't it? That's cracking. Yeah. Progress report, colonies. Meadows being scythed. Wildflower squares. That's good. Right.
very nice pictures in here, which is what we like. Isn't it? It's good evidence, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. You seem to have some really large butterflies in the community, then. <laughs> yeah, don't they, Jess? <laughs> I, found, I found the orchard the other few weeks back. You know, I've never, found, I've never seen, found it where it was before, you know. I thought I kept hearing about the orchard. And there's one night, oh, was it? Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, you just walk up that path between the ponds and... Uh, yeah. The leisure centre, and it's there, it's, it's on the right. And the left. Sorry? And the left as well now. Is it? Yeah, it's on the left now. Extended. Well, yeah. Are there any apples on the trees yet? Quite. I don't know, I can't notice. Yeah. They have been for years. Um, yeah. mm. Although um, uh, some people come and collect them all, um, which they weren't very happy about. So I'm going to take them all. Yeah. Back and they're oh, carrying oh, oh, oh. massive baskets and they just take them, take all of them. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> not, not in the spirit, is it? Yeah. No. <laughs> okay, so that's a uh, rather safe update. I don't know oh. how much this is related to this, but I've had quite a few of the residents complaining to me about you know the area um, where the pond is behind Te uh, where you go behind Shepherd's Walk. There's a little pond. Um, you know where uh, Dew Falls Drive. Is? Yeah, it's called Dew yeah. Falls Pond. Yes, yeah, it's called Dew Falls Pond. Yeah, yeah. and um, it's all overgrown all around it. And I don't know if that has to be left like that for some sort of nature reserve issue like because of habitats and things it has to be left or if it can be trimmed and things because wouldn't it's have all thought, wouldn't have thought that's part of the nature reserve not yeah. Drew Falls Drive but, yeah. well then you saw something in there and if it's by yes, a pond yes I think there, is, there are because I think there was issues because I think South Ross went in and decimated it they did, and then they yeah, repaired it all and put a nice fence around it. But there is a notice on, there's a kind of a gate or something which is closed, I believe. But there is a, um, a notice on there which may have a telephone number on or something. But I think it's South Gloss. Who, uh, yes, that's yeah. it. Maybe season. Oh, and I've had a couple of people yeah. saying, um, yeah. oh, you're on council, yeah. can you that, get yeah, me what yeah. you're yeah. making about yeah. this? Well, yeah. you yeah. can tell people it's nothing to do with us, but we will pass it on to South Gloss. Okay. Um, and raise it with them. I will also mention it to Sarah Messenger from Baddestone. Yeah. Okay, thank yeah. you. Because I think she's obviously aware of the as well. Yeah, thanks. Sure. Um, okay. Now we get the exciting bit. Are we all in view of the STC policies and procedures? <laughs> <laughs> I've got questions. Have you? Grant awarding policy to start with. So, my the questions first on bit. the first policy are right. so I've been with Hatton since 2013. I've been. And <laughs> <laughs> the sums on here in terms of the amount available under each pot of money available to the individual groups, mm -hmm. I don't think we've ever reviewed all of the pots. And every year we get to year round, we always discuss how we do have a substantial sum of money left sometimes in the overall pot of grant aid. So my four various different aid pots on here. So my question is, is the maximum amount available under community development grant aid, grant aid and youth grant aid correct or should we review it? My gut feeling would be that £500 especially for grant aid and youth grant aid is adequate. Um, grant aid, quite often, there's not much money left in that. Youth aid, we're seeing more scout and guide groups. Um, not scout, well actually, yeah, scouts tonight, mm. but guides and brownies and rainbows and that sort of stuff. Mm. Towards, mm. Yes. Mm. So, and I think £500 is good. Yeah, well, I would agree with that. I, I mean, I think five hundred pounds is a good number. I'm just saying, in general. I mean, mm. I'm, I'm just thinking I've always named it that way myself, and obviously now it's several years on. Mm. But, but what five hundred pounds would buy you back in two thousand thirteen, opposed to now buy in two thousand and nineteen, is significantly yeah. different. Mm. Mm. So it's still, still a nice is, is, is Yeah, I think I, 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 my yeah. gut feeling is that I think that it's a reasonable amount. And community development grant. I, to be honest, I think that £4,000 is quite generous. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think that's a lot. Yeah. But yeah. 
Actually, that budget and that budget has been cut because that money wasn't anywhere near. Spread. If you put these others up, then people are going to then go to the next one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Regardless, yeah. So, uh, so I, I think I would agree with Charlie. Four thousand is generous. Yeah, I think you can probably do to the other source. Yeah. I mean, like uh, state gift. Yeah, Some only do like two hundred. Yeah, it's two hundred pounds, and then yeah. I thought. This is over. Yeah, so we are quite. I mean, it's so generous, yeah. every time what we actually award. Yes, it's like more above 500, but you can award below 500. Yeah. Yeah. And we have done it. I mean, I've made it where we sat here and someone back to 500 and then given them like 150. Yeah, actually, we're doing quite a bit that time, and then everyone will have to do a few things. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's just, it was just a question I had for you. That was all. Right, 732, safe children and children and all of them. Yes, I agree um, with pretty much all the changes beneath it, but again, it would be nice to have seen it written a bit more, I don't think we can necessarily inside the policy changes, so it's not specific to groups, it's like all over the, you know, the broadest, broadest, I think South Gloucestershire used that sort of uh, basic heading. Safeguarding policy. No, safeguarding children, young people, and Yeah, I guess it's because safeguarding adults is completely different from safeguarding children because children always need to be safeguarded, whereas with adults it's only if they're in a vulnerable situation. Yeah, well, they are vulnerable. Yeah, vulnerable. Yeah, vulnerable. vulnerable. Yeah. I'm, I'm using the language yeah. that yeah. the government language for yeah. standard DBS clearances, and you get DBS clearances for work with children, young people, and vulnerable adults. Yeah. So that's why it's so it's, that's, it's just yeah. echoing sort yeah. of standard. Well, I'm just saying, I'm just, I've noticed ones which have been recorded. Re 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 You've got to remember, this is isn't to do with the, because we work to, or I work to the South West Council's Joint Safeguarding Procedures. This is to do with, it's more to do with, um, well, the two policies together are to do with how um, we regard our staff working mm -hmm. with those people and how we, um, you know, in terms of recruitment and uh, safeguarding and recruitment and stuff like that really. So that again, that's one of the reasons I sort of, because I thought that might not be clear necessarily to you guys around recruitment, so that's why I just put in please read this section in conjunction with the other policy, because that's about recruitment of staff and safeguarding in regards to our staff yeah, working exactly. with I understand Ben's point though, because when you're safeguarding, you want it to be universal. But if um, in certain situations, like if a woman says, "Oh, um, I'm living with a partner who beats me up," but if she says, "I want to live with him," there's nothing you can do for yeah. safeguarding because she's not considered. A, if it was a child, even if they say, "I want to still be in that household." you would still raise it as a safeguarding issue. Yeah, yeah. The child doesn't have the authority to decide. Whereas if it's not a if it's the same adult, we can't safeguard. So that's them. why I agree with the, the text itself being more descript, but I would have preferred the title just to be a bit like this is a safeguarding policy. But anyway. Um, the So you haven't got a problem with the text, it's no, the, no, title. No, the title. Yeah. 
Um, well, it's the title of the set of philosophies. And then the... Um, I on think the, it sets it out yeah, clearly yeah. what it's all about. Yeah. Or maybe it's probably got it from the set of philosophy. Yeah, yeah. 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 Section 2 on the second bullet. Why is vulnerable adults missed out in that section? Section 2 of the second bullet. So you don't have young children. Young people, yeah. it doesn't say vulnerable adults. Okay, well, we could put that in, I mean, I suppose. So I'm just trying to figure out, there's lots of different places in here where we're going... So that's so what you mean, and then, so, so that children, would apply young adults, so a children bit further adults, down, actually, in the, in the yeah. that one there, the where paragraph. it just says yeah. children, young yeah. people, it doesn't yeah. say vulnerable adults. Yeah. But you go further down the line through the next paragraph, and it's children, young people, or vulnerable adults. Yeah, yeah. so we need to just add yeah. that so in there. So we need to just add vulnerable adults. adults. Can't be, without sort of scanning it all, there's some time, there's places where I actually put in for consistency, then removed because it was coming from like a quote. For example, in the Convictions, Rehabilitations and Offenders Act, they talk about working with children or vulnerable adults. There's no reference to young people. So it does depend on. Yes, yeah, slightly you know, different. If you, if you quote quote, something, yeah. you, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't. you can't change that one. But is this only for the recruit? So this is only for the DBS check? Or no. is it for general safety? Yes, it's safeguarding. It's the town council safeguarding policy. Yeah. 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 So, oh. Yeah, we're not on the DBS yet. Uh, what comes next? <coughs> So you want so it's just where it says young pages. on that yeah on that second yeah. bullet point you want vulnerable adults added in yeah, yeah. and also further down yeah. uh, with the consideration will be in the will be the context because that just says children young people so you need vulnerable yeah. adults put in there as well on the residential trip there yeah. Yeah, no, I'm just talking about this one here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So it says uh, part of the um, covers quite a bit, doesn't it? South Lost Youth World Partnership. Couth yeah, yeah. uh, has just come online as a, a free uh, advice line, so that's been publicised. That publicised a lot within uh, schools and other youth organisations. Off the record, have got a particularly good website. Um, and uh, the Diversity Trust that we work with now, they're the providers of uh, LGBTQ plus stuff within the South Gloss Youth Work Partnership. So where it says useful information, do you think it would be worth adding, this is not a definitive list, there's... No, or actually, it's a short description of what each of these is actually for. I mean, in the case of the bottom one, LGBTQ, I think a lot of people are going to be able to associate with that, but I didn't know what Cooth was. Um, I, know roughly what off, I know roughly what off the record is, I'm just thinking of people using this policy, the master actually have a very short... Lines, they, are, they are hopefully going to be, if we ever get them, staff, youth work staff, so, um, yeah. I did, well, yeah, or just they, they should, they, reviewing... They, part of their induction would be reference to those... Mm -hmm. So that's easy enough to do. Yeah, it's easy enough to do. Yeah, I think that would be useful. Yeah. 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 Should we have that we in do that. And, you know, my friend, do we have our own missing something here? No, that's the, if you look on where it says phone numbers for your own use, mm -hmm. please add details and carry with you. So the, 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 you, we would hope that the youth them. workers mm -hmm. would identify other useful yeah. numbers mm -hmm. and then add in 5 to 10 or whatever. Yeah. That's just like an, an indication. Yeah, okay. so, yeah, so it's meant right to be a sort of work in progress, yeah. really. So those numbers, so off the record, Cooth and LGBTQ+, are those for mental health, um, so to reference, like, support for mental health and things like that? Uh, information, advice and counselling, yeah. Okay. okay. The thing about Cooth is it's all uh, done online or by phone, so there's no... But off, okay. the, off the record, have uh, now got a bit of a bit more of a presence in South Gloss. It used to be more Bristol based, but oh, South Gloss okay. Council are now paying okay. stuff. Okay, Ben's <coughs> proposed it. And there's a few uh, changes. Anyone second it? Franklin, okay. all those in favour? Yep. Right. <laughs> no, I don't want to show you up. <laughs> right, grant funding application, service level agreement. No. 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 Well, we have community development grant aid. Bradley Stoke Radio update. Uh, that was in your agenda pack. Yeah. It's been a hectic few months at BSR. Um, you're not on this anymore, no? No, you I'm said you're not on All right. Yeah. Who's doing all the microphone stuff then? I don't know. There's mm. a few people doing it, because at the Wheatfield yeah. event, there was, um, what's that lady's name with blonde hair? Um, um, and there was a guy called Mike. I think that, that picture's from the yeah. uh, Wheatfield event. Um, yeah, Adele. Adele oh. was doing the mic stuff, and there's a guy called Mike doing the mic stuff as well. Good thing for a guy doing the mic stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> on a mic, on a mic. Right. So how Are much they asking for? British Bake Off. It's not, it's just an update. Oh, it's yeah. an update. Is it an update? Right, okay. Because the community development grant yeah. aid, obviously, they do an update every couple of months. Yeah. Okay. Okay. On that one. Right. We've done 8.3 is nothing. Nope. 8.4, we've done that. Yep. 8.5 is nothing. No. So, meeting's closed. Yeah. Next week, 14th of October. I can see you all there. Yeah, it's got a way of it. Sorry? Yeah. 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 I know. This year's is fine, isn't it? Yeah, because yeah, we had another summer, that's right. So we'll all, or yeah. just a week of it. <coughs> Coming next week though, apparently. What? More sun. Is it? I'm not going over yet. My daughter's in there. I might not be here on uh, Wednesday. John.